Fourth place qualifier, Ricky Rudd. You're still hurting from your Daytona crash, Ricky. People say this track's tougher on you than even Daytona. Well, this track is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt me a little bit, but uh, I'm going to try to block out the pain and see what happens. Can you go the distance? I think so. I think we can do it. I hope the car is up to it, too. The new leader is number 15. After the pit stops, the yellow and blue for Thunderbird. For Bud Moore's team, Ricky Rudd is out in front. The Virginia driver is in first. Darrell Waltrip is in second. Bobby Allison third. Rutman fourth. Richard Brooks in fifth. Now here is Waltrip trying to close. Black flag has been put out on number 75, Dave Marcus consultation flight they say he jumped on the restart now that happened to him down in the 125 mile races at daytona about uh, 12 13 days back 10 days back here's that battle for the lead it is 15 ricky rudd right there and here's waltrip closing up trying to move in trying to get it right behind them bobby allison about eight car lengths back lies third and then joe rutman is the fourth place car, number 98. There's some interval back to the fifth place car, number 90, Richard Brooks. Six is Neil Bonnet, seventh Lavani, and here comes Waltrip on the inside. Wheel to wheel, just an amazing performance by Ricky Rudd. This tough, scrappy Virginia driver stays right in there. Had four pole positions last year, couple of wins. Look at him fight Waltrip. He took a terrible header at Daytona two Sundays ago, and look at him, stay in there and fight for the lead. On the outside is Ricky Rudd, on the inside. It is Darrell Waltrip, wheel to wheel, all the way around. Well, we've got a car blowing up. It's Allison, directly behind the leaders, coming in with the engine gone. No caution, no yellow. Allison is in there, still wheel to wheel, but that track could be a little breezy up in turn three. Waltrip goes in front. Here they are diving down. Now yellow is out. Caution now comes on. It had to come out. Yeah. Were they a little late on that? I would say, uh, really, you couldn't see. Uh, looking into the sun late in the afternoon like this, uh, you lose all your vision. And, and you have a blown engine. You don't know where the oil's at or where the car's there. So that There he is late. in the second position, number 15, Ricky Rudd. It's remarkable that Ricky Rudd is even here today, let alone a contender in the Richmond 400. Steve Potter tells us why. He survived this wild crash in the Bush Clash at Daytona. Battered and by his own admission not 100% physically, Rudd came back to finish seventh in the 500 last Sunday. Now he tackles Richmond. I'm still not 100% right now, but I'm, I'm getting there and it seems like each day I get a little bit stronger. Uh, the, the dizziness seems to bother me a little bit when I get in the corners and uh, the G-Force gets to acting on me a little bit, but, but I've come a heck of a long way. Ricky, they say short tracks are tougher on a driver than super speedways. Will you be able to go the distance here today? Well, I don't know. I, I didn't think I was going to be able to go 500 miles at Daytona the other day, and I, and I surprised myself I was able to go the distance. I think a lot of it has to do if I can get myself taped up and get some kind of a, a rig on my ribs where it won't hurt so bad. If I can do that, I think I might be able to go the distance. Ricky Rudd, number 15. David Wheeler, the brother of H.L. Wheeler, knows a little bit about sports medicine, has been with Ricky Rudd the past several days here. And this race, they feel, will be far tougher on Ricky Rudd. Again, I'm down in Neil Bonnet's pit. And car 12, NASCAR made them pit because the right headlight door was missing. The rule is that if the headlight door is missing, that you're getting an advantage of fresh air going inside the car. Someone, they, Junior Johnson says that Neil had an accident and knocked the headlight door out, which that's not illegal. So there's some controversy down here as to whether or not he was supposed to pit or not supposed to pit. Now he has pitted and he has come back on the track and he will now lie in fourth position on this restart after the eighth caution of the day. Ricky Rudd will be running in first. There you see the car that's running in fourth is Neil Bonnet as they come down out of the corner. It is Darrell Waltrip in second, Terry Labonte in third, Neil Bonnet in fourth, and they are reporting that Bill Elliott is back in the lead lap. That is incorrect. There are four cars in the lead lap. He is just on the tail end of the lead lap. There's number 44, Terry Labonte running in the third position. Bill Elliott is sandwiched right up in front. He was trying to get a lap back. There you see number nine, Elliott. If he can get around 15, he will be in the lead lap. 
briefly as they came down to the start. He had a moment at it. Here's number 15. Ricky Rudd in front. Boy, if he could pull this off, what a sensational story we would be. Laps complete. 341 laps down. 341 complete. Going into turn three. Down to the inside, number 11, Waltrip. Handling to the bottom of the track, the 15, the Ford Thunderbird buddy, up on the high side. Well, right now, Darrell's got it his own way. If he can get by Ricky Rudd, it'll be a while before, I think, before Neil Bonnet gets through all the traffic that he's in right now. So we got a force, I tell you, Ricky's running awfully well. He may not get by him. It's a half-mile sprint to the finish coming up. On the outside, Rudd still is able to handle Waltrip, but he's coming along. Well, now, Darrell just showed something right there. He just moved right up on the inside of, uh, of Rudd. I think he, he just got a lot of muscle down the straightaway. You watch him close the gap in here. Meanwhile, here's Rudd trying again on the outside to stay in the lead. Terry Labonte lies third. There is Ricky Rudd. 27 years old out of Chesapeake, Virginia, going side to side with Waltrip. Out of two. Waltrip has the advantage for a moment, but as they come into the back straight away, they're dead even another time. Waltrip back in front at three. Third place car is now number 44, Labonte. And Waltrip cleanly gets under, but Rudd just won't give up on the outside. Now, Waltrip has enough room to come all the way across the top. First and second place, down to the main straightaway. Back into turn number one, and looking like he's trying to get a lap back. Bill Elliott's still in there, buddy. Well, Bill Elliott's running awfully well, but uh, right now, Waltrip's beginning to move away, and I guarantee you, oh no, Neil Bonnet's got a flat tire on the back straightaway. He'll have to come in. Car number 12 is slowing down, and he's pulling out of pit road. What a bad break for Bonnet. Benny Parsons was saying before the race, this is really a gambler's race. It's how the dice shake out for you and a tire problem. A lot of this loose material down to the inside of the track gets kicked out, and there you see number 12 in with a tire problem. It's all over now. He's a lap down to uh, Darrell and, and Ricky Rudd and those guys, and the cars are running so evenly, I don't believe he'll ever make it up. Three cars now remain in the lead lap. Waltrip. Rudd, Labonte, as Bonnet comes back to speed. Well, you know, when I, I see that everybody got out of the way, and Ricky Rudd now on the back bumper of Darrell Waltrip, I think this is going to have a lot. And uh, also, the 44 car is now in the third place on the outside. Now, if they can get a jump on Earnhardt, they'll have a good run at, 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 to the end. 371 of 400 laps complete. It is a sprint Saturday night special style to the finish. And we have the Ford, number 15, the blue and yellow car, pulling up on the Chevrolet, number 11. Ricky Rudd in second spot, as he was in 1981. Can he make it one better? Well, now Ricky can smell the roses. It's almost at showtime now. He's got to go, and uh, he's doing quite a good job of playing there. Well, for a driver who for some 1,200 feet was going side over side and end over end just a couple of Sundays ago, what a comeback. Here he is down there fighting with Darrell Waltrip at turn three. Laps trickling away down to the finish. A little wiggle by the leader as he came out of four and collects it. And coming up to the outside, I'll tell you, this Virginia crowd, if this Virginia driver can beat Something Tennessee's happened. Waltrip, is going to go bonkers. Something's happened to Waltrip. He's not getting the side bite in the corners he was getting. Rudd, Rudd's running up on him really fast now. Terry Labonte in the car number 44, lies third overall, and he is running about five car lengths back from these two leaders. I look for Ricky Rudd to, to pass Darrell right now. He's hit him two or three times to let him know he's back there and, and in a hurry to get to the front, so uh, 
Well, is that the way you say, but Walsh is going extra slow going into the middle part of the corner. You can see him fight the wheel as they come down to the main straightaway. Here they are, and there's that 17 car that broke down and brought out the caution just coming back on the track. Clark Dwyer out of Colorado Springs. Meanwhile, back straightaway. There's the opening on the inside. Ruddy elects not to use it. This is the battle for first place, and the laps tell the story. Right now, in this event, there are 377 complete. Darrell Waltrip is cutting down on the inside of the racetrack. If Ricky plans to get by him, he's going to have to change his grooves just a little bit to get a, an outside shot at him like Neil did, because Darrell's holding him awful tight. Let's get a word from Dave Despain of the STP Pit Communication Center. Ken, we've talked all day about the combination. Darrell Walker has kept his combination working low on the racetrack. He's the only driver who's been able to run down there consistently all day long. Now what's happened? Ricky Rudd has got enough tough combination, and they're side by side. Who's got the best combination? It'll be decided in the last 25 laps. Out of turn number four. Rudd working the high side. Waltrip on the inside. Ricky Rudd willing to stick it out there. Crowd standing, cheering as the battle goes into turn number two. Here they are in the back straightaway. It's the Ford on the outside, the Chevrolet on the inside. Into turn number three, wheel to wheel. Ricky Rudd is out there in the Budmore car. The Warner Hodge to Junior Johnson car on the inside. Still wheel to wheel. Going around the long way, Ricky Rudd is trying to pull it out. Using up tires, using up time, using up laps. Back straight away, Rudd pulls in front. Ricky Rudd goes in front. Laps down. Getting down to a finish across the line of tremendous cheer from the sellout house. Back comes Waltrip on the inside. He's not done. Darrell Waltrip sticks it back in there another time. Now, if Ricky will just go back to Darrell Waltrip's groove right now, Darrell will never get by him. 381 complete. In the main straightaway, down they come. A lot of these wreck machines that continue to fly. No. Let him have the inside. Letting Waltrip back on that inside the short way around the track. But the fast way continues for Ricky Rudd to be on the high side. Well, it is. He's getting off a good uh, forward bite off the corner. But if he'll run Darrell's groove right now, I believe he's got a little more stuff off the corner than Darrell's showing. Not very often you see it come down this close, this deep in one of these races, buddy. Well, I don't know what's happened, but Ricky Rudd is really pulling away right now. And it's, uh, you know, he just may have been saving himself. He was injured going into this event, and he may have been saving himself for the sprint. Well, a man whose life was in the very balance just two Sundays ago, 20 feet in the air, side over side and end over end, at the Daytona Speedway at better than 190 miles per hour, is making an incredible comeback here in Richmond live on Superstation WTBS today. He may be in trouble. I just saw Darrell Walter watching his groove, and he moved to uh, a different groove, and he, and he actually pulled back up on Rip, Ricky uh, fast down the back stretch. So. There he is, down the inside, Walter making a move to take Take the lead back. Rudd fights him off another time. Still the outside works for Ricky Rudd. No one is sitting down. Everyone is standing. It's another typical Grand National finish at Richmond, Virginia this afternoon in this $243,000 battle. Down the inside. Here comes Waltrip trying to move through. Doesn't make it. Oh, man, this spectator is harder on me than racing. I tell you, you want to tell him that it looks like he's running a little bit faster. If he, if he would just go a little bit lower in one and two, I think he would pull away from Darrell a little bit more. We won't be cutting away as long as this battle stays like this right to the finish. On the outside, the 15, it is still Ricky Rudd there. Only once has the Richmond 400 been determined by a last lap pass. That year... 1957, over a quarter of a century ago, the principals then were Glenn Wood and Curtis Turner. Turner led going into the final lap, but a tire blew and Wood slipped by for that victory. Well, there's no chance for a draft here, but they could be just as excited as we get down to the finish, buddy. Well, they can, because Darrell has all, showed you all day, he can run low, and, and if Ricky would happen to go in the last corner a little bit hard and Darrell got under him, it would be right to the worst. 
no way to draft on a track of this size, but you can 10 laps to go, but you can sure run a man. You can pull up behind, you can drop kick them, but the story here, look at this. 10 car length advantage for Rudd. He stretched his lead, but he's into lap traffic now. This could hurt him. Well, it can. He, if he gets the right brakes in traffic, if everybody's looking for the lead car, it may work to his advantage right now. I noticed that uh, Ricky's opened up a little more of a lead than he has. But more must be ecstatic. And proud, he's got to be. Ricky Rudd is showing you why he won last year, and, and the Bud Moore people were really concerned about Rudd's condition, and I don't think there's any worry anymore for him because he is driving the first race. Terry Labonte lies third, fourth, Bill Elliott, a lap back, fifth is Bonnet, sixth is Earnhardt, seventh is Richmond, eighth is Gant, ninth for nine, tenth is Rudman. But now, beginning to build up an advantage, it's Ricky Rudd former Grand National Rookie of the Year back in 77. Here he is down the main straightaway another time. Coming to full speed, being chased by Darrell Waltrip. Well, Let's go quickly to Dave Despain at the STP Pit Communication Center. The difference between those two cars is tires, Ken. Darrell Waltrip been keeping that good combination that we talked about all day, used up all of his new tires. On the last pit stop, he had no tires to put on. Ricky Rudd, also out of new tires, used a pair of cold scuffs. Those are tires that had been run just a few miles and had taken off the car, allowed to cool. He put them back on. They're better than Waltrip's tires. Rudd has the combination. We're down to it. Just seven laps to go, six this time by. Ricky Rudd on his way to his third Grand National victory, but those little pebbles, those little rocks, those small things that can happen to a car can easily overcome a man here. And as we mentioned earlier, this race has been wracked by controversy over the years. This is the one they talk about. Five to go this time by. Can Rudd stay in front? Well, anything can happen, and uh, Darrell's not out of it. He's five car lengths back, but... Uh... Anything can happen. They have lap traffic they have to worry with, and so many things can happen. Some lap car throwing some rocks out of the track. That is what caused the problem for Neil Bonnet when he looked like he was on his way. There you see the Budmore Pits standing by. Car number 15 down out of turn number four. What a great day for this Virginia driver. Whether he wins it or not, they know he came here today to race and he has put on some kind of a battle. And the laps continue to dwindle away in the waning moments. It's been a perfect day for racing of Richmond, Virginia, live on WTBS. Our next broadcast will be with you on a Saturday night from Nashville, Tennessee, when the Grand National goes there a bit later. They'll move these cars on to Rockingham. And then, of course, Atlanta and Bristol upcoming on the Grand National Tour. Leader getting caught up with some heavy traffic oh, just boy. in front of him. That gets a little nervous. I believe there are two to go this time. And you see the folks from Virginia waving their hats and cheering on. No matter if they came with red and white colors, green colors, whatever, they've all turned to blue and yellow here because he is a big local favorite. And he's about to do what Lenny Pond came so close to doing twice and couldn't quite do. Ricky Rudd is coming down into the main straightaway, and a white flag is coming out. There is one to go on the comeback story of the early 1984 season. The kid who nearly lost it all at Daytona Beach two weeks ago. Hurt, they said he would hurt worse in this race than he would hurt at Daytona because you take such a beating and jouncing on this track. He's clearing away for the final time around. The checkers are about to fall, and it is an upset. Ricky Rudd has won the Richmond 400. The crowd is on their feet all around the racetrack, as thrilled as Rudd is to see a Virginia driver finally take one home at the Richmond Fairgrounds. What a great run by Ricky Rudd. I, I, I just can't say enough. I'm, I'm as thrilled as it happened to me. <laughs> Here he is coming out of pit road, Buddy Baker. The Budmore team, a team you drove for for a lot of years, put together a stout little machine today, and the fourth Thunderbird has carried Ricky Rudd to his third career win. We'll be getting a word with the winner momentarily. Benny Parsons will be there with him. A man who has also tasted victory on this track. All right, here he is coming down, and we're going to be joining the winner in just a moment. Pulling down, getting ready to come in for the victory celebration. Would you say they could call him one tough customer? Oh, I guess they sure could. 
Ricky Rudd, one of the toughest of all time. He rode a Bronco that he couldn't get loose of two weeks ago. And he comes back here today with a sensational victory, defeating Darrell Waltrip, who entirely dominated the event. He pulls into victory lane, and we'll be getting ready to go down there and meet this tremendous driver who has pulled off a great win. Terry Labonte is going to be credited with third today. It'll be Bill Elliott for fourth, and Neil Bonnet for fifth, and Dale Earnhardt with a real stout effort for sixth. Tim Richmond unofficially seventh. Terry Gant for eighth place. And they're all gathered around Ricky Rudd down there. Now Benny Parsons trying to make his way through. They said that they had to build a special seat, and he was not comfortable. I can see his wife, Linda, right there. She has to be thrilled for him. But Ricky Rudd has done it. He has come back from one of the worst crashes in Daytona history. You can see that his eyes are still totally bloodshot. Those black marks under it, of course, right after the race, they had to tape his eyes open so he could practice at Daytona. But a confident guy is sitting there in victory lane. Let's go to Benny Parsons. Benny's back at the gas pumps, Ken, because uh, we thought that uh, Ricky was going to go back there first, but he sort of, sort of surprised everybody. He came into victory circle. Ricky, it's about time a Virginian won this race, don't you think? Well, I think it is. I'm just I'm tickled to death to Wrangler Jeans and uh, Bud Moore and the whole entire crew. They did a super job. Now, you, how'd you feel all the race? Well, I tell you what, I owe it more to my sports medicine fella that came down. Uh, David Wheeler came down and patched me up, taped my ribs up, put a lot of cream on my ribs so it wouldn't hurt so bad. And I felt good all day. I'm surprised that I was able to go the distance. Somebody says you might run a little better when you feel funky. Is that right? Well, maybe it helps to get my head shook up a little bit dizzy now and then. <laughs> Well, this is the first one this year. You're going to go for the championship now. Well, we hope so. You know, we're not, we hope not to stop here. We uh, hope we can put this Wrangler forward in uh, victory lane again. But, you know, the competition is awful tough. We just, uh, we just happened to hit the right combination right at the end of the race, and it was enough to win the race for us. A tired but happy driver who came back from a devastating crash just a week ago, Ken. Who came in the clash out of turn four at better than 194 miles an hour. They said the car lifted and then this horrible series of sidewinders just missed the edge of the fence. And everyone said that for Ricky Rudd, it would be a long time before he'd ever be in shape to win a race. And now, two Sundays later, here on WTBS, you have seen him pull into victory lane. The radio network is now interviewing him. You've heard from him. What a great story for Ricky Rudd. His third grand national victory, and it comes before a hometown crowd. Well, Maybe it's the water here in Virginia or something, but he certainly Andy rose Ford to the occasion today. Darrell Waltrip with a magnificent race, winds up in second, Labonte third, Bill Elliott in fourth. And Let's go to Benny Parsons. God, since he's been racing, yeah. let's go to Benny. Race all in the Budweiser Chevy, There's and right when you were going to pull in the victory lane, what happened? Well, we did everything but win the race, Benny, and I know you know how that is. We uh, we had the best car all day, and I never really drove it that hard. Came time to put the last set of tires on when the other boys fit and we didn't have any and i guess we just did not figure on using as many tires we did we didn't mount enough new tires so we elected to stay out and it uh, it probably hurt us a little bit but i'm still thrilled to finish uh, the race in good shape and uh, we run well i guess we can maybe look forward to rocking him uh, i'm certainly not disappointed congratulations to ricky rudd and thank the lord for a safe race darrell walter if you're off to one of your better starts uh, as far as the quest with winston cup don't you think well, I think so. I, I hope that uh, in, in chasing the championship that I'm not forgetting i got to win a few races. <laughs> That's it from Darrell Walter, Ken.